Hello and welcome to KDE News, where I showcase a bunch of things that have happened in the last week, so merge requests, and then I also try a bit to explain how they were actually implemented. So if you want to contribute to KDE, you can give it a shot. So this is the first one, let's go through all of them first. And it's a nice change when you're compressing a file, instead of saying here to, pic to pictures.zip, uh, it says here has archive.zip, so it's, a, it's actually a bit easier to understand what's the name of uh, the, well, what will be the name of the zip when you actually compress something. Then in system settings, there is, there's this interesting thing. So a lot of people often complain about the fact that when you search for something in like Keraner, the right result is not always on the top. And a lot of that comes from weights. So in this case, we increase the relevance if we have an exact match in the keywords. So if you are searching something in system settings and you search for a specific KCM, so system settings uh, module, so like the section, and you search for that exact name, then you can be sure it will be at the top. Then we have this very interesting patch, which actually allows to activate panels through keyboard uh, shortcuts. So as an example, if you want to, uh, well, use the panel, activate kickoff uh, or c cycle through all of the applets in the panel using tab, you can actually focus the entire panel by doing meta alt P and then you tab until you find your, the right element, which is very interesting. It allows you to actually use the panel only using the keyboard, which is an interesting concept and I will actually make a video about that. This I think you will be interested in, you know, about when you get a wrong password in the login and the password like goes transparent for about a second or two and then comes back saying password wrong. Well, other systems do have an animation and there is proposal to actually implement this animation as well. This is just an example, it's not the actual animation. So there's a lot of discussion to find the best test animation. So the one that actually feels more natural, natural when you get the password wrong. So in this case, there's even this nice dialogue and you can decide like the swing distance, the animation speed and the wiggle count. And there's a lot of people checking all of the parameters, uh, parameters trying to find which is the right one. Apparently, this is like the GNOME one which is very fast. I think uh, it's one of the best. And then there is another proposal, which is this one, which is like this, which is also very nice. So there's a lot of discussion on what is the very, very best animation when you get a password wrong. Then there is this one, which is redesign homepage. And as last week, there was a redesign that actually landed for the application page. And I spent a lot of time going through it. And now there's another redesign for the home page, which is nice. Discover is really getting redesigned. And in this case, it's about the home page, and this is the mockup which is directly linked. And well, it looks sorry. It looks super nice. Like the mockup is actually pretty old, like it's from November 15, 2021. I thought it was older. It's not very old. And it looks very nice. I hope that the end result will really look like this because this is just beautiful. And there's people actually trying to put the effort into implementing this mockup. Then there's now an inline reply for notification for KD Connect. So if I send you, send you like a Telegram message and you're using KD Connect, you will see the notification on the bottom right. And now there's actually the inline reply. So you can just type there a click send and it will be sent from your phone. And that works for, as far as I know, uh, all of the Android notification that actually support this. So like WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp messages that should work. So it's a very nice feature. In the past, you did have a reply button, but that opened a dialogue and it wasn't very natural. Now it's much better. Finally, the very last one is there's now an action to open up the command bar. So the command bar is a super, super useful feature that not many people know about. So adding an action to trigger it is a way to try to make it more known. So in the help section all of all of the apps that support the command bar, there's now this new 
find action action that allows you the, like it opens up the command bar which is a search bar and then you can actually search for anything probably probably you can even search for the find action action because this is still an action so weird but okay so let's start watching what actually changes code wise this is the first one this is the one about actually changing the label and as you can see it's not just a change of labels here it's here the picture that zip here it's here has and the change is from being two to being as but the name actually changes and the reason for that is that by default, the name of the zip folder that actually results from being compressed is before this patch, the name of the folder you are in. So if you are inside of pictures, the result will be pictures.zip, which maybe doesn't make that much sense. So the new result is just calling it archi archive, archive, I don't know how it's pronounced, which is doesn't act, it doesn't actually make assumptions on what the user wants. It's just archive. And then if the user wants, it can change it. So how does this work? So before, so red code, we add that if it's not just a file, then we take the file name from the get file name. So actually the whole path to the file. And then we take the last section dividing at the separators. So we take the folder that this file is in. And if it's longer than 20 characters, then the new name is the left 10 characters plus the dots plus the right 10 characters. So if you're in a super long directory, the name is not that long. All of this is going away. Now there is just one line that says the default name is archive. Then here there's the actual action and before it was here to the name of the thingy and now it's here as the name of the thingy same year going from to to as and that's it really this is pretty easy next one this is the system settings runner and how this works is that we have a runner.c++ uh, file code that actually searches through things and then results um, well, it gives a result to what is uh, being matched and what's the relevancy of that match. And of course, if it's more important, then the relevancy should be higher. So what happens here is that if there is any keyword that actually matches the search uh, term and the keyword contains exactly the query case insensitive, then the relevance is 0 0.5, which is probably like one of the highest relevancy that this runner produces. Otherwise, the relevancy is going to be 0 0.2. So if it's a perfect match, then relevance 0 0.5. Otherwise, if it's just a match, then 0 0.2 is fine. This one is l a bit more complex. So I will just explain like the general idea of the merge request. You can see that it's like 177 lines of new code. So the general idea. So first of all, we see this is the panel.qml code. So it's the panel. And uh, by the way, this is the one about actually adding a meta alt p shortcut to focus the panel. And if we go inside the panel code, we see that there is a completely new frame SVG item. What is this frame SVG item? Why is it new? It's actually explained here. When you focus an applet using tab or whatever, then you should be able to see that that applet is actually focused. And in order to do that, we draw this little blue rectangle, which is what this frame SVG item does. If we go see here, it's called widgets tab bar which is the name that we use for that rectangle. It's the same one as the tabs. So if you go into kickoff and you see the tabs on the bottom left, those also use widgets tab bar and third party themes can style this. So it could look different on your theme. But the idea is that we draw something to indicate that this element is actually focused. And in fact, we can see that it's only visible if the panel is active and active focus item, there is an active focus. Item. We can see that the width of this thing is root width. So it's as wide as the panel, which is probably going to look a bit weird, but 
it really does indicate that you're focusing the entire panel. But uh, it doesn't end there, does it? We have at least uh, these changes, which are interesting. And let's start with the compact, compact applet one. What is the compact applet? So when you add an applet to the panel, it might decide to do its own uh, compact representation, with, which is like what is drawn on the panel to represent that up applet. So for kickoff, it's going to be the kickoff icon. For the task manager, it's going to be all, all of the icons of the apps you have open. For the show desktop, it's going to be the show desktop button and so on. Some applets do their own compact representation. As an example, the task manager showing all of the uh, tasks that you have open, that's custom. Whereas some other applets just rely on the default compact representation, uh, just like kickoff as an example that just uses an icon. So what we're doing here is that we're changing the default compact representation so that it has a focus scope. So when you tap through things, if an applet is using the default compact representation, then you will actually be able to focus that applet and by pressing enter, it will actually activate that applet. Otherwise, maybe those applets are not using the default uh, representation, in which case they have to manage all of the things on their own. And this is the case for at least these three applets, the show desktop, the task manager, and the feature ones, which as I've said, they're, you know, um, custom. In this case, there are changes to all of these applets to actually implement these things so that focus scope, you can see it's the same thing as the compact applet, but it's now re-implemented. No, sorry, it's the same code as before, sorry. It's this one, this one. So you can see that there is an active focus on tab true so that this most area, which is inside of the task manager, actually behaves as uh, the default, um, what gets activated when you actually focus this. Same here, we get a mouse area which uh, gets focused when you, well, when you focus it. And if you press space, enter, return, or select, it actually triggers the action of showing the desktop. Same exact thing here. Finally, this is the very last one. We get uh, the add action to alt menu for the command bar. And we can see that we are creating a new action, which is called A. And we are setting the icon of this new action to the search icon, which makes sense. And then the text of that action to find action, which is surely a better text than open command bar, which is a bit confusing if you don't know what command bar is. Then we raise the version of the standard containers in the UI standards.rc, which I can only guess is to make sure that your uh, changes to the settings actually get updated if the user updates their version. And then this is the actually important stuff. We add a new action element named open k command bar, which is this one. So this is in the menu, which is called help. So if you now open up help, now you will see this action, which is called open key command bar, which is defined here. Pretty easy. And that was everything. I hope that this was somewhat interesting to actually learn how things work in KDE and what's going on. I hope that you like the idea of redesigning this cover that's going on lately. And I hope that we'll, you will stick around following the KDE news for the coming weeks and if you haven't yet there's also all sorts of videos about the past weeks i think this is like the fourth episode of kd news so if you're interested interested to know about how things work in kd land then go check them out and well to be honest those are a bit more interesting than this one i was a bit tired but go check them out and see you tomorrow with another video